Well, um, when I was in Sydney, I was uh, I was actually working part time at the university and trying to do a little consulting on the side. And somebody asked me to design a loudspeaker enclosure. I could help him build them, but I didn't know anything about how to design them. And in fact, he built one. He spotted one day there was a sale on an inch and a quarter plywood for the price of quarter inch. And he jumped and he got a couple of big sheets of this stuff and he built a 16 cubic foot corner enclosure with a, a 64 square inch port and probably spent some of the family savings on a JBL eight cell horn and a 15 inch woofer. And this all was put together. Oh, and a, and a crossover 1200 cycles. They called them then. <clears throat> and it was a beautiful thing. And it never had any good bass. And we didn't understand why that was so. Um, I found out later after I did all the work. But anyway, there I was trying to design a loudspeaker enclosure for somebody, not a terribly big one. And uh, I didn't know how to do it. So <clears throat> I hit the library. The University of Sydney had an excellent, big engineering library. And I looked at all of the related uh, journals from the, from the USA, the AES, the IEEE, the um, uh, Acoustical Society, read all of those, uh, two or three organizations, journals from the UK, because I knew they, they published a lot of stuff about loudspeakers. And I couldn't find anything that actually told me how to design a loudspeaker enclosure. And I complained to my colleagues at the university and they said, well, have you seen Neville Teal's paper? And I said, well, well what, what's that? Well, as I said, you know, he, he, it's published in the local uh, IRE journal. Well, talk about cultural arrogance. I hadn't bothered to check to find something that was right under my nose because I didn't think I'd find anything in Australia. Well, that's a lesson learned. I got Neville Teal's paper. I read it. It made sense. I got his, um, his references and I read them and it all made sense. And I got a couple of little instruments and I found a loudspeaker, made measurements on it, got the Teal parameters. And I was able to design a loudspeaker enclosure and it worked. This was uh, about 1965, 66. Neville had published his paper in 1961. Anyway, that really got me going and I started looking around for a way to do some research in loudspeakers. And uh, I tried <clears throat> the other university across town in Sydney and they said, no, nah, we got no money for audio. There's nothing in that. Now you want to do some microwave research, we can fund that. I said, thank you very much. I won't. And uh, went back to my friends at, at Sydney University and they said, oh, well, <clears throat> you know, we're very interested in audio here. And they were. There were a lot of people working on loudspeakers, on amplifiers and acoustics. And uh, they said, I, I think you'll have to enroll for a, for a degree. Uh, and then we can get you some scholarship money. So that's how I got my PhD. Um, I, ex basically extending Neville's work. Uh, looking at the losses in the enclosure and the port of a, of a vented box. And uh, decided he hadn't said an awful lot about closed boxes because he thought they were pretty simple. And he understood them. But... I thought the rest of the world ought to ought to do so and just tidied that up and published a couple of papers and of course all of that was the basis eventually for my doctoral thesis and the rest is history.